Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the uh, basic microeconomics course again. Uh, this is Dr. Angan Singh Gupta. I welcome you all on behalf of Swayam Prabha Channel 15. I wish that you all are doing well. And uh, so today is our seventh lecture where we will be discussing about um, long run production function. And so um, in the last day we discussed, we started discussing about theory of forms and theory of production. And we discussed about short run production function where we had discussed about uh, when one particular output changes, how one particular input factors of production changes, how does uh, production change. Uh, we also discussed about production function and uh, what is short run and what is long run production function and uh, what is marginal productivity average productivity uh, the relationship between total productivity marginal productivity and average productivity um, and then we discussed about why uh, the you know uh, what what is a uh, diminishing marginal returns law of diminishing marginal returns so today we will discuss about the long run production function which is essentially um, you know allow us to change all the factors of production or the quantities being used of all the factors of production in a given time period so if you remember the short run production function was a, a condition where you can uh, you cannot change all the factors of production at least one will remain as fixed input in a two production uh, two input production process um, we have uh, seen that if it is a labor and capital um, either of labor or capital remains fixed and um, that is how our output changes because we cannot change both in two factors of production labor and capital at least one has to be fixed in short run and the other one is capital and we did a small example of um, you know estimation of marginal product and average product where we saw that how our total product is changing when the capital has remained fixed in 10 10 10 10 10 and our labor input is changing from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and so on and how our total output is changing now the marginal product is the rate of change whereas the average product is total output divided by total number of factors of production that particular factors of product factor of production input average product for labor is total output divided by total number of labor where uh, marginal product is change in total output divided by change in one unit extra labor uh, recruitment or you know enforcement so if i increase one unit of labor how much output uh, uh, you know changes what is the quantity of output changes that is known as marginal product productivity of labor the same is marginal productivity of capital with respect to changing one extra unit of capital you know, and how much the output changes um, and we have seen that it first increases and then starts decreasing and then it goes to negative when it touches zero the total product reaches maximum when marginal product goes to negative average product cannot go to negative because total product divided by total labor or total capital total product is always more than zero it cannot be negative so average product cannot be negative but marginal product, the change, the incremental rate, what every unit of labor or capital is contributing, that marginal product, that contribution can be negative. And hence, marginal product goes back to, uh, can go to negative. And when marginal product goes to negative, that means the total product, instead of increasing, when I in include one extra labor or capital, instead of increasing, total product goes decreasing. 
right? And then the total product after reaching maximum, it falls down when marginal product reaches to zero and then further to negative. So this is in a nutshell what we have discussed in our previous class. We will be discussing about uh, long run production function today in this uh, lecture where we will change both the factors of production, both the inputs. Yes, we will start with a Cobb Douglas production function, uh, which was deducted by, you know, Professor Paul Douglas and mathematician Charles Cobb um, together based on some empirical data. And um, here, you know, we have we have seen that quantity of um, output Q is a function of labor and capital L and K. And then there were certain other factors of production, like say technology, organization, so and so forth. But here we are discussing L and K, where L is uh, labor and K is capital. So it's a linear homogeneous production function of degree at which, you know, two inputs contribute to the production process, producing a certain amount of output. Now a Cobb Douglas production function Q equals a L, L to the power alpha K to the power beta, where alpha and beta represents, see alpha is with L, beta is with K, alpha and beta represents output elasticity of labor and capital respectively. All these A, the values of A, alpha and beta should be greater than zero and they are less than one most. Now, alpha and beta, that means the elasticity, output elasticity between, um, you know, for labor and capital in an ideal condition, assumed to be equaling one, right? Alpha plus beta equals one. So over here, A, L to the power alpha, K to the power beta, instead of beta, we can also write, um, you know, K to the power one minus alpha, because beta is nothing but one minus alpha. So we can write Q equals A, L to the power alpha, K to the power one minus alpha, but not on all the conditions that we will learn later. You know, today itself, but probably the last slide. So, um, so what is this output elasticity? If you remember what is uh, demand elasticity, that means with a price elasticity of demand that that is like how much or elasticity of demand this output elasticity is not, nothing but the elasticity of output so elasticity of demand or demand elasticity was nothing but how much quantity of demand changes when price rises by one unit so similarly output elasticity is how much total output q changes with the rise in one unit of with the rise in one unit of labor or capital input. So quantity of demand that changes with price. If you remember income elasticity of demand, quantity of demand that changes with income. So similarly over here, output elasticity is quantity of output when it is changing with the labor and capital you know, employed in that production process. So it is the responsiveness of output to a change in levels of either labor and capital. So coming back over here again, if we see that Y, so these are the certain properties that Y equals total production. It is the real value of all goods and uh, services produced in a particular year. L is labor input. You can estimate it in terms of person hours they have worked um, in a particular year in that particular year k is the capital input it considers all machinery equipment buildings etc and a is known as the total factor productivity so the total factor productivity is anything associated uh, anything beyond the labor and capital often considered as technology along with the labor and capital so this is known as total factor productivity that a a is this you know this a to the power a l to the power alpha k to the power beta this a remains fixed yes um, so this is about the cobb douglas production function if we can estimate the marginal productivity of labor and marginal productivity of capital 
if you uh, remember a bit of differentiation or if you have ever gone through so this is nothing but delta q by delta a change in output with respect to one unit change in level in delta q by delta l equals this alpha a l to the power alpha this comes in front so it becomes alpha into a l to the power alpha minus one so this is how we do it the same thing happens with beta k to the power beta if we are doing delta q by delta k that beta comes in front and k beta to k to the power beta minus one you can look at it if you are finding interest in this you know differential calculus and all but otherwise with this also we can estimate the marginal productivity of labor and capital um you know and with the, that is the change in output with respect to one unit change in labor and capital so what is production with two variables um, in long run is when the relationship between production and productivity uh, you know we look at the relationship between production and productivity keeping both labor and capital variable input so you can change the quantity of capital and labor anytime you want if there is a sudden demand you can change both the capital and labor that is long run if you cannot change the labor but you can change capital or if you cannot change the capital and you can change labor then that remains a short run period for that particular production process right so how do we estimate or how do i say um, as we have studied in indifference curve that in indifference curve what do we get in indifference curve we get equal amount of satisfaction now what is that equal amount of satisfaction that equal amount of satisfaction which we get through the consumption of different combination of two outputs so indifference curve gives me the you know the points on indifference curve that gives me all these different combinations of apples and oranges rasgulla and gulab jamun all different combinations which gives me equal satisfaction so similarly isoquant gives me all different com different combinations of capital and labor which gives me a particular output and that output on a particular isoquant remains fixed that particular output on a particular isoquant remains fixed now what is isoquant iso is same and quant is quantities same as in difference curve where we looked at indifference curve is where every individual consumer or uh, you know ever where an individual is indifferent in terms of choices given in that indifference curve that whatever combination you give four apples one orange one apple four orange three apples two orange two apples three orange so whatever combination you give that gives me equal amount of satisfaction the same thing happens here in case of isoquant whatever combination of capital and labor you give if those combinations are producing the same amount of quantity iso is same quant is quantity then that will be my isoquant in long run again as i said both of the factor of production are changing and experience a diminishing return now again i will connect with indifference curve that why that indifference curve were convex to the origin because the utility used to decline with more and more production of a particular good or commodity so when you consume more and more what happens your marginal utility declines so this that is diminishing marginal utility right so what we discuss in theory of production diminishing marginal return so keeping one factor same if you recruit one another factor more and more the output generation by each and every addition becomes lower and lower too many cook spoil the food right so if i have a lot of mangoes my you know the satisfaction i get from those mangoes slowly decline the similarly 
if I have too many laborers, then probably there will be, uh, you know, the union problem, the motivation problem, fights and politics. So maybe the output will not increase much due to inefficiency. And that is explained. So, uh, uh, you know, um, isoquant is often explained by these diminishing returns. And that is how, again, an isoquant is convex to the origin. Yes, convex to the origin. These are the isoquants. You can see at one side, we have this capital per year on the y-axis. On the x-axis, we have labor per year. So we can observe over here that isoquants are downward sloping and they are convex, convex like the indifference curves we have studied in consumer behavior. Now, um, you know, when it's always fixed again, the mostly we keep the labor on the x-axis, capital K in the y-axis, labor L in the x-axis, capital K in the y-axis. You don't need to write labor per year or capital per year. You can just write L and K and you can just L, or, you know, uh, slash and then yr k slash yr that also you can do uh, to save time because l and k is the labor and capital almost globally accepted now what are these indifference curve sorry isoquants are stating so these isoquants are stating that if you see that q1 if you see here that brown color isoquant q1 is showing that in under Q1, all these different combinations of labor and capital will produce 55 units of outputs. In Q2, they will produce, produce 75 units of output, whereas in Q3, they will produce 90 units of outputs. And of course, the labor and capital composition is changing. That is where the production is increasing. It's same as we have studied, more is better in our consumer behavior that when keeping one particular commodity same, I increase the consumption of the other commodity, more is better. And if I, you know, five apple and five oranges as compared to that, if I have eight apples and five oranges, I will be happier, right? And I move to a higher indifference curve when I am happier. So the same thing happens here with one labor and three capital that firm, that particular production unit produces 55 units of quantity of production. Whereas if I increase one extra unit of labor, so the labor number moves from one to two and the, um, the capital remains fixed at three and the production increases to 75. The third one is labor I increase to now number three, the capital remaining fixed at three units and hence again I have increased the labor with the same amount of capital, my quantity is certainly bound to increase, mostly as of now. Our marginal productivity of labor, we assume, is not the negative side. But so what we observe, you know, again, as I said, marginal productivity is not on the negative side. That means total productivity is not falling. And hence, when I am increasing one extra unit of uh, labor, then we observe that the total quantity of production has moved to 75 to 90. So what we can observe from this diminishing marginal rate of substitution, often known as technical substitution, what we know from this that when our production increases from you know, um, we have say three labors and capital increase from zero to one. We have three labors so, and capital increases from zero to one. Um, and 
sorry over here first we discuss that we have uh, three capital and labor increases from 0 to 1 1 to 2 1 to 3 and our quantity of production has increased from 55 to 75 and 75 to 90 so when keeping these three capital capital fixed as three units i have increased my labor force from 1 to 2 and from 2 to 3 let us assume from 0 to 1 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 now when i have zero labor and no capital i don't have any production and then i increase one extra capital so zero labor and three capital i have no production now i have increased or included one labor one labor three capital how many i am producing 55 yes so total output increases from 0 to 55. So the change in output is, change in output is 55 minus 0 equals 55. Whereas change in labor is, earlier there were 0 labor, now we have 1 labor. So always from the recent one to the previous one, so 1 minus 0. So, you know, on the denominator, upper, it is 55 minus 0. Niche on the uh, on the numerator, it is 55 minus 0. On the denominator, niche it is 1 minus 0. So 55 divided by 1. So the change is 55. Yes. So the same thing we observe when we are discussing uh, an increase in the labor force further, keeping the capital same at 3. And we have observed now my output with one additional input, my output increases from seven from 55 to 75. That means my output has increased by 20 units. The next one, my production increases from 75 to 90. That is 90 minus 75 equals 15 but keeping the capital same at 3 my labor has increased from 2 to 3 so that means with one extra unit of labor my marginal product now is 90 minus 75 15 so initially my marginal product was product of labor was 55 minus 0 with 3 capital okay 55 minus 0 55 the next one is when 2 minus 1 then 75 minus 55, the capital quantity of production increases by 20 units. I include another uh, you know, labor from 2 to 3 and I see my output has increased from 75 to 90, that is 15. Now how it has changed? First 55, then 20 and then 15. What is changing? The returns, the marginal product, the returns I am getting from the output so uh, from the labor so the returns is the output so with every additional out labor how much return i am getting so this is diminishing marginal return where the marginal return of output additional output i am getting from extra unit of labors for each and every recruitment that is gradually decreasing so uh, that is known as diminishing marginal rate of substitution all right so we are substituting um, capital and labor we can so the same thing of uh, you can observe if labor is fixed at three and then the capital increases from zero to one one to two and one to three um and the you know the output increases at a decreasing rate 55 20 and 15. So what is the substituting among inputs? The substituting among inputs is nothing but when the managers want to determine what combination of inputs to use. They have both labor and capital. So they can shuffle three labor, two capital, two labor, three capital, one labor, four capital, five labor, zero capital if possible or four capital one labor so they always have different combinations like we have different combinations of commodities here we have different in theories of form or production we have different combinations of labor and capital all right 
So the slope of this isoquant is given by how this labor and capital are being exchanged. Yes, substituted for each other and our attempt will be to try to keep the quantity of production same because if we can keep the quantity of production same then only we can estimate the uh, the substitutability between labor and capital how do we measure that um, if you remember we used to measure as the marginal utility of x and y and all so here we are uh, measuring in terms of um, the change in capital and change in labor so the you know as again manager and uh, manager will, would like to use different combinations of inputs so now we have just two inputs capital and labor we will try to understand you know um, that what will be the the you know the substitute substitutability between capital and labor and this is known as marginal rate of technical the previous was marginal rate of substitution this is marginal rate of technical substitution because we are employing this uh, this concept of changing capital and labor in a production process which is of course a uh, you know uh, a technical uh, you know subject which is our technical issue um, and hence the only that probably the engineer or the business person or the entrepreneur whoever so they would have an understanding between how capital and labor will change uh, keeping the uh, quantity of production being same but the economists will say that given a certain budget whether it makes sense or not so let us see minus why minus because uh, for a particular level of quantity if we are trying to keep the quantity same so when i am increasing level i need to sacrifice capital otherwise if capital i keep similar i just increase the labor i will move to the next in isoquants right if i need to stay on the same isoquant producing the same quantity of production then i must need to substitute labor and capital that means if i am recruiting more of labor i need to give up certain capital the same thing is happening if i am recruiting more of capital i also need to sacrifice give up certain level of a certain number of labors right um, so this is how we generally um, you know measure the the substitutability between capital and labor and again you see that capital on the y-axis labor in the l-axis and um, when i move from you know five to uh, two you know and we are on the q2 75 now so initially we had um, you know five capital and uh, one labor force and now if we are moving from the first you know this point to this point if we are moving from this point to this point yes if i recruit one extra unit of labor how much i am sacrificing capital three units two units so when i am recruiting one labor extra i am sacrificing two unit of capital the same thing happens from two to three i am recruiting look at this you know the screen i am recruiting one labor but my capital number reduces from three to two right earlier i released two capitals just to have one extra unit of labor immediately if i want to have three levers now i am leaving only one capital now i want another level a lever from three to four now you can see over here how many capitals i am sacrificing two by three and i move further to from three to four so every time my labor is increasing by one unit one unit one unit but the demand for capital when we have more and more labor generally it decreases and we have observed that from four to five when we have um, you know increased one extra unit of labor our capital 
only falls by one third of its capacity. There, so when I have over here, I have very less amount of capital. So my demand or you know the way I value capital that is increased and naturally my you know my willingness to sacrifice capital will decline will be lower as compared to when i was in the very beginning when i was desperate to get certain labors because now over here i have too many labors right i have too many labors but i don't want them i want uh, uh, you know sorry too many of capital but i want labor so when i move from one to two i'm okay to sacrifice say two units of capital because we desperately want labors and even if I let go capital, that probably won't make uh, much of an impact. Now, which are these isoquants? Where uh, or how do they look like these isoquants when they are perfectly substitutable? So just take an example. They are straight line. And you know, um, at point A, I have certain amount of capital and labor. At point B, I have certain amount of capital and labor, and point C, certain amount of capital and labor. Now, what we observe when we move from A to B, the, of course, the the uh, composition is changing, and further from B to C. But you observe that the way I am, uh, the way I am. Uh, replacing my labor or my capital that is remaining fixed that is not changing at all because the slope has remained fixed so in a uh, perfectly substitutable commodity when i have you know sorry substitutable uh, factors of production when i can easily replace labor to capital or capital for labor then i uh, you know i generally get a downward sloping straight line because the amount i am sacrificing over here over here if this is one the amount i am sacrificing is much lesser uh, and you know it follows it follows the same so uh, but it is it is now if it is convex it will go down but if it is a perfectly substitutable, it will not go down. Rather, it will, the, you know, that is why it is downward sloping. It will certainly um, go down because you need to replace by another one. And hence, uh, we have observed that um, the isoquants are downward sloping, but in a perfectly substitutable um, factors of production case, we will have a straight line where the labor and capital, if you remember how we were changing delta L by delta K is the slope for the isoquant. So over here, the slope is fixed because we are replacing the same amount of capital every time with one extra unit of labor. So if I have one extra unit of labor, I can uh, you know, give one capital. Two extra unit, one another extra unit of labor, I will give another capital. So if labor and capital labor, so a car and a driver. So if this is com perfectly, um, or it's it's probably a uh, complementary uh, example. It's not the right example. But if I have say um, uh, producing something where I I can replace labor with the capital, I. Um, they probably you know a robot and a human being then i will get this kind of straight lines what we observe in in case of fixed proportion production function this is nothing but the complementary uh, production function we find an l-shaped or right angle shaped isoquant where the example i took about the car and the driver here yeah, you know over here say one car one driver over here two cars two drivers over here three cars three drivers and you know now if i have this is my car and i have five drivers over here but i have one car how many cars will travel only one it's the same example which we discussed in our indifference curve the same thing happens if i am um, having one uh, you know um, 
capital one labor and now over here i have two capital three capital four capital and one labor two cars three cars four cars but one driver how many car can travel only one so the same thing over here happens if it is a perfectly complementary so you know beyond a certain combination you increase any of the other one it does not really matter like say if i have one pair of shoes it is fine i have five of left and one of right i can just use that one similarly if i have six of left and two of right i can just use two pairs not more than that and hence these perfectly complementary production functions or we always we also call fixed production fixed proportions production function where the proportion of labor and capital will remain same like say over here and then over here and then over here and then you if you want to measure the distance they are equidistant often and will be often equidistant not always we'll discuss about that shortly and they will be considered as um, isoquant for um, for perfectly complementary products um, perfectly complementary inputs or factors of production right now we will discuss about returns to scale what is returns to scale a returns to scale is when we measure the scale of production that is the amount of uh, sorry the scales of production that is the total number of labor and capital we have recruited and its impact on the total output now there are three types of uh, returns to scale increasing return to scale decreasing return to scale and constant return to scale increasing decreasing and constant when what is increasing return to scale again that is the previous one was diminishing marginal return what is return return is output with respect to capital or labor and what is marginal marginal is the change in the output with one extra unit of capital or labor over here it is return to scale try to identify the difference return to scale now what is scale scale is the its capacity size of that particular industry or firm while it is producing or manufacturing something so same here when we discuss about scale we generally try to understand its overall capacity and over here you can see that for the you know for the production function q equals 50 is a function of when we are recruiting 10 labor and 10 capital all right now let us understand what happens for increasing return to scale for increasing return to scale we observe that with 10 labor and 10 capital my total output uh, is 50 units if i multiply my labor and capital by two times so i just increase the scale of my production the capacity of my production the total number of inputs or factors of production working there is multiplied by two i expect it may also rise by two times if with the labor and capital being doubled my output increases more than two times wonderful right it happens so if my labor and capital increases by two times so if you see 10 labor to 20 labor 10 capital to 20 capital but how much my quantity of production has increased 50 to 150 so my labor and capital has increased by two times and my output has increased by three times and hence this is known as increasing returns to scale when does it happen when larger output is associated with lower cost all right so in the automobile industry and all we often see that that you know the cost is low but the output is much bigger the cost of factors of production is low so when you you know uh, increase your scalability when you recruit more of a labor and capital because the you know every labor and capital 
um, you know, when recruited, they are potentially can contribute more. And if it is like the, 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 the marginal product is in the increasing side and your total product increases for a long duration, then, you know, this is just in a long run, the more the output is, you, you gain a, an opportunity, you gain the market share, right? And you can keep it in a lower cost. The second is one firm is more efficient than many others. How do we consider that? It can happen that in a particular firm, whatever labor and capital is working, so they are technologically, if not technologically, you know, by their um, quality of their input, the quality of their labor, the skill they have, all are very advanced. And hence we have seen that even if the labor and capital is increased by two times, the output increases by three times. And over here, what we observe that the isoquants get close together. Let's see. Over here, you see this particular distance is wider, larger than this particular distance. So what it means, it means that if my output, um, my input has increased from 5 to 10 for labor and 2 to 4 for capital, my um, ISO uh, quant shifts from 20 to 20. Then it is constant return to scale. Yes, I'll come to that. So, but instead of increasing my labor and capital two times, two times, I observe that those who are, whatever was being produced is Q equals 10 with two capital and five labor should be multiplied to 20. I mean, multiplied by two to 20. So now when I have four capital and 10 labors, Instead of 20, if you combine four capital and 10 levers, my ISO quant 30 is here. So this 20 should have been over here. This 20 should have been over here. Instead of over here, this is 30. And we have a, an ISO quant, um, the 20 ISO quant. For 20 ISO quant, I will require lesser amount of labor and capital, probably eight cap labor and 3.5 capital, something like that. Yes, so when at this point we should get 20 outputs, we are getting 30 outputs. So the ISO quants are getting closer to each other. Constant return to scale, very easy to understand. I have 10 levers and 10 capital. I multiply by them, uh, by them, multiply them by two, and hence my quantity of production should increase from 50 to 100. And in, you know, and if we observe that when we are increasing our labor and capital by the same amount or by a particular amount, we are increasing our labor and capital by a particular amount, we observe that my quantity of production is increasing by the same proportion. So the labor and capital increases from 10 to 20, 10 to 20, and my output has increased exactly 50 to 100, unlike the previous case, right? So, um, why why this happens the number one cause is size does not affect product productivity we have seen a larger long business industries um, you know where uh, there are a lot of people working and you know it, it has a large size and but at the same time the productivity may not increase or you know whatever the technology whatever the size it um, it does not really matter in terms of the output it is producing. So if you increase the labor and capital by a certain amount, the production also increases by the same amount. Yes, it can, it, it can happen 
when we have a large number of producers in small fragments. So they are all, when they are operating at a smaller level, so they can achieve that you know, constant return to scale, if not increasing return to scale. And what here we observe that the isoquants are equidistant, the same distance, right? Over here, you can see the distance has remained same. So the same distance. So five two capital five labor, I'm producing 10. Four capital 10 labor, I'm producing um, you know 20. And then for the six capital and 15 letters, uh, labors, I am producing 30 units. So every time I am increasing my labor and capital, both the both uh, of them by two times, two times, and I see that the isoquants are moving exactly by the same pattern. Yes, and um, hence this is known as constant returns to scale. The last one is decreasing return to scale. And I think you now understand what is decreasing return to scale. This is nothing but when the output rises less than two times, even if you have increased your output by two times. So we have seen that labor and capital in the slide, we can see that the labor and capital has increased by two times and two times, whereas the output, the production should have got increased to 50 to 100, but how much it has increased? It has increased only by 1.5 times. It has reached 75. So the labor and capital has increased twice, but the output has increased by less than two times, here 1.5 times, then that is known as decreasing return to scale. Yes. So there can be several reasons again. So it can be decreasing efficiency with large size. I told you that too many cooks spoil the food. There are a lot of, there can be a small uh, industry or a large industry where I have taken labors beyond it is really needed or beyond it is optimal. Then I will see that I will observe where they are, are decreasing uh, uh, return or not that if any, any additional labor or capital is actually decreasing the production or not. If it is not decreasing, well and good. If it is, the production is not decreasing, the rate at which the production is increasing, that elasticity, that is decreasing. And hence, if you are considering these points that, you know, the and, uh, reduction of entrepreneurial abilities, because I can start a new business, I may not be extremely efficient, and then I will have to, uh, you know, whatever I will produce that will be lesser in quantity as, as unlike I was expecting otherwise, right? Uh, so this happens when we generally in a particular industry, it can be just two persons industry, five person industry, it can be five fifty thousand uh, persons industry. So it, it all matters how you manage within. So uh, it's a decreasing efficiency with large size may happen where we can find a decreasing return to scale. Um, it can happen on inefficient, under inefficient managers or those who have um, you know, limited entrepreneur ability who can raise questions and, um, and hence you know, transform their production to the next level and that does not happen and hence we observe that the isoquants uh, move you know further beyond and what we observe that instead of over here you know so with two the capital and five labor i'm producing 10 units yes whereas with eight capitals and 20 labors right so initially I was producing with two capital and five labor. Right now I'm producing with eight capital and 20 labor. By how many times my production has in, uh, labor and capital has increased? Four times. What we observe instead of, now if we combine eight and 20 together, instead of 40 isoquant, jumping from 10 to 40. So if labor increases by four times, capital increases by four times, so the output should also increase two by four times, so 10 to 40. 
Yes, and we have observed that it is not going to 40, even if it, we are just multiplying the labor and capital by four units, our output has only reached to 30. Yes, so they are, so 30 should have been somewhere here. Now we observe 30 is associated with the four times labor and capital because inefficiency of someone or uh, the management or the employee or certain other factors. And hence the now 40 will be somewhere here. Yes, and hence there is a distance between the uh, between uh, between the ISO quants under decreasing return to scale. All right. So if we go back to the Scott Douglas production function, we can again, uh, as we say that alpha plus beta, they are output elasticities. If they equate to one alpha for labor and beta for capital, they are output elasticities and nothing but you can, you will, um, you know, um they are nothing but the coefficients and um, so what we observe they need to add to one for a constant return to scale for an increasing return to scale this output elasticity so if you increase labor or capital the output how much it increases in an elastic condition it will increase further it will in increase more so it is nothing but the increasing return to scale because you are increasing by two times, it is increasing by three times. So it is elastic, right? So the same thing happens if I increase my uh, price by two times or fall my price uh, by 50% and I see a 70% rise in, my, uh, in the demand of my commodity. So naturally there is an elasticity. So in case of elasticity, the, the, the resultant factor, you know, the, the output here increases more than the rise in the inputs so naturally that alpha and beta together when it is an output elasticity will be greater than one for decreasing return to scale same thing alpha and beta even if they are increased by five times the production is does not increase by five times rather it increases by four times it can increase by 4.5 times it can increase by 4.9 times just taking an example will be uh, the reason for a decreasing return to scale where the uh, even if after increasing the inputs the output does not give us a satisfaction a satisfactory return so and alpha plus beta the elasticities will be smaller you know um, and hence they do not add to one yes and the capital output elasticity of capital does not compensate to output elasticity of labor it can but if it is alpha plus beta less than one they are not yeah so otherwise it can very well complement each other here we will discuss about the equilibrium of the uh, of of a producer how they identify the best possible combination of capital and labor and uh, and how to achieve the maximum production now they have a constraint. The constraint is again their budget. If you remember in our indifference curve and um, you know, budget line, uh, they used to be tangent with each other, going back to the consumer behavior class. And there we used to find the, uh, find the maximum satisfaction that that consumer will derive out of a particular combination of two commodities given a particular budget or their income, right? So given an income, where and how much they will consume of both the commodities, goods or services to achieve the highest satisfaction. So here the satisfaction from the consumer, now here it is production for the producer, the output, quantity of output produced for the producer. So they will try to maximize this quantity of output with the combination of capital and labor and given the constraint, which is the budget line. This budget over here is known as ISO cost curve. ISO means same, same cost. So on that particular straight line, all these points will bear the same cost. But on those points on that budget line, they will give 
different combinations of capital and labor yes given their prices that is pk for capital pl for labor they will be spending this much of cost so the cost like the budget equation the budget function uh, the cost uh, iso cost or the cost function over here is or the budgeted cost outlay whatever you say is given is pk into the amount of capital price of capital into the amount of capital plus price of labor into the amount of labor um, the equation can be written uh, differently and we see here that we can find that total capital being used is cost divided by the price of capital minus pl by pk that price of labor by price of capital into the labor so the you know the the uh, the slope is minus pl by pk right the slope of the iso cost curve so if again going back to the marginal rate of substitution um, and you how much you know if i increase one unit of labor how many capital i am sacrificing so that is the rate of change between labor and capital and slope of iso cost should be the same thing but given as that you know pl by pk that is the price of labor divided by the price of capital because over here this is my slope and this is a constant the budget is constant the price remaining constant only the labor and capital is varying so if the labor increases or changes how much change will take place in capital and that is determined by this uh, coefficient and this is nothing but the slope that is the ratio between price of labor and price of capital yes and the vertical intercepts are nothing but cost divided by pl price of labor that will be my x axis where labor is mentioned the quantity of labor the amount of labor and cost divided by pk price of capital will be my y axis that is the amount of capital if there is no labor and c by pl that vertical intercept on x axis is nothing but i mean the uh, over here this should be the vertical is the intercept and this should be the horizontal intercept so over here if there is no capital being used this will be c by pl if there is no labor used this will be the c by pk um, taking this example you can see here on the x-axis the labor curve on the horizontal uh, c we will see that c by pl is the intercept over here c by pk is the intercept and how do i get that if the budget is rupees 10,000, the outlay is 10,000, labor cost is 10 per unit, capital cost is 100 per unit. Hence, how many labor I can use if there is no capital, 10,000 by 10, that is, you know, uh, that is 100 units and, or 1000 units, sorry, and 10,000 by 100, that is 100 units. If there is no labor, I can employ total 100 capital units of capital if I am using that entire you know outlay or budget over here same thing I'm not recruiting any capital I'm just recruiting labor and I can um, recruit thousand units of labor each taking 10 rupees and then my total budget is exhausted and 10,000 rupees and the slope is given as price of labor by price of k so 10 by 100 actually you know this graph should be like this 100 by 1000 something like this much more flatter but you know I, we can't give it like now it is like this and it should be like this because um, the x-axis thousand should go far away right and um, uh, now if you look at this that maximizing output for a given cost level you can see here that um, at point a and b um, I can I am utilizing the entire budget but I am not basically producing the maximum because my ISO quant is lower Q1 and if I am on point E then I am achieving the highest ISO quant um, and spending the same uh, budget I'm on the same ISO cost line but I can achieve a higher production so this will be the um, optimum one uh, on point E however I cannot achieve Q3 or Q4 because that is beyond my uh, financial capacity where my constraint is breached here so I cannot produce Q3 and Q4 uh, I cannot afford that capital and labor at that to produce uh, those outputs 
right? Um, so finally, we get similar to the consumer behavior, the isocost curves. Finally, we get the um, the equilibrium in in difference curve and iso iso cost. I'm sorry, in difference curve and budget line where they are getting uh, being tangent to each other. That gives me the equilibrium in consumer behavior. I repeat, in consumer behavior, the consumer satisfaction is highest. Consuming two commodity is when the indifference curve and the budget line is being tangent to each other and over here we observe that we are achieving the maximum production where the iso quant and the iso cost curve are tangent to each other and the iso quant we have already learned the slope is marginal productivity of labor divided by marginal productivity of capital and the slope of the iso cost is uh, price of labor divided by price of capital and you see in both the cases there is a negative sign because they are negatively sloped and on the tangency both the slope should be similar and hence marginal productivity of labor divided by marginal productivity of capital should be equal to PL by PK and then we finally derive an equation where marginal productivity of labor divided by price of labor is equals to marginal productivity of capital divided by price of capital which marginal productivity divided by the price of labor that means whatever i am spending for one unit of labor yes my average marginal product or the marginal product per rupee per currency unit spent for one any unit any input should be same now it's labor and capital there can be several other inputs so for all the inputs whatever price i am spending per unit price whatever marginal product and the return i am getting should be similar so then we can achieve the equilibrium again i repeat the marginal product derived for marginal product for any input derived from one unit of currency spent for that particular input of production should be equal for all these inputs then we can achieve the equilibrium all right so we'll stop our class over here and i thank you uh, for attending this lecture um so uh, i thank you all on behalf of swam broker channel 15 uh, for attending this lecture uh, take care stay safe in the next lecture we will also again continue with theory of firm and we will be discussing uh, theory of cost there and uh, till then stay happy bye bye see you